couples are starting to own their experience and tap more into their intuition and really get to learn what the birth process is and how it works and take um, take control of their birth story mm-hmm. and become more autonomous in their health. And I mean, if we're going to have a baby, we need to know how it got there and how it grows and how to get it out, right? Hello and welcome. My name's Campbell. This is Spiral Up Channel. Hope you're having a fantastic day. And today we're going to have uh, a chat. We've got a little bit of a roundtable going on here. We have uh, Gary and Carly from Queensland joining us. And we have Jess from Tennessee. Tennessee um, (laughs) in the USA. Uh, She's joining us as well. And Jess is my girlfriend. So everyone say hello to Jess. So We're going to talk about the whole, I guess, family making, child rearing, creating process, and I guess how we can do it better. You know, we've spent the last cycle really, um, you know, just popping out babies, right? And that's kind of what we're taught at school, you know, just hit 16, then, oh, here's your alcohol, go to a party. Next thing you know, you know, you've got kids and you don't know, you know, you're in a relationship (laughs) you probably shouldn't be in. Um, and there, there's no intention there, and and obviously we see the effects of that, you know, in our in our youth and our older youth. So yeah, um, there's a thing called intentional birthing. Mm. So I thought that we would jump into this. So welcome everyone. I guess I'll throw it over to uh, you, Gary and Carly, because you guys know a bit more about this. And sure. um, yeah, if you just want to sort of introduce yourself, let us know a bit about uh, yourself, because you, you've You've sort of done this recently. You've got a, a three-month-old, is that correct? Three months? Right. Yeah, that's yeah, right. A young a little girl. So, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, tell us about you know, what you've done, intentional birthing, all this kind of stuff. Awesome. We're really excited to tell you about yeah. it. Um, yeah, whole... well, I, I did a search and there's, it's so, there's hardly any information about this anywhere. Like, mm-hmm. it was really hard to find information on it. So Yeah. Yeah, and that's good. You know, luckily, Carly, when Carly and I first met, she said she was like into her thing was ancient uh, healing for uh, and wisdom for women. And that includes a whole range of things. And um, Do you want me to elaborate? I think Carlos, <laughs> Carly, sorry, should elaborate on what she does, perhaps. Yeah. Sure. So my my field of work or my business is called Wild Grace Healing and I focus, this is what I do, I focus on helping women um, in their preconception journey. So preparing their body and their mind, their consciousness for taking on a soul, another little person into their body, bringing them through into the realm and um, preparing their bodies physically and preparing for natural birth. So looking at supporting families to start to take birth back into their own hands in a more of a conscious way and between the husband and wife rather than handing the power over to nurses per se in 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 medical system so much yeah it's not a medical procedure mate that's right so it's really learning that birth is actually a natural process and it's a beautiful empowering journey for both man and woman to take together Mm, uh, it's an interesting point isn't it I mean it's it's got to be the most natural thing ever right like clearly without birth we're, we're good by humans but um exactly. but now we, we we all kind of believe that you have to go to hospital to, to, to you know to do it and to the point where if if someone does a you know um, an alternative birth and anything goes wrong it's everywhere right it's all over the media blah 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 you can't do this you have to come to hospital mm. right. i said what is that and you, and you don't hear of all the horror accidents in hospital mate. like mm. all of my other births were in hospital and they're all nightmares mm. and carly like the whole thing was intentional so when we had um when we like the, when we conceived it was the full moon it's our anniversary anniversaries on the full moon always uh yeah and um so when Bubba comes along she knows they know they want to mate (laughs) 
Mm. You know, they know they're wanted there. And um, especially, you know, we gave birth in our front room, but the prep work that Carly did, look, it was all came down to Carly, really. And look, you, as a man, you've got to be there for your woman. That's all you got to do. Tell her how good she is. Tell her how good she's going. Tell her how beautiful she <laughs> is. All that stuff. And, well, and mate, that's, that's our job to be there, as, you know, support your woman. And mate, but the responsibility, a lot of like, she, she did so much prep work for the whole birth, like, sorry, for the whole nine months. It wasn't like we just walked into the birthing room and just went, went for it, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, Carly prepared, mate, she was studying every night. Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah. And, and we'll leave links as well. I didn't didn't realise that, that it was your business as well. So um, there'll be links in the description if you want to uh, awesome. check out Carly's work and her website and everything. Um, do you, like, because one thing I've heard is people align it with the stars. Uh, is that something that, that you do? Like I've heard that people all sort of conceive on a certain night when, you know, the stars are aligned, you know, when the stars align. Mm. Um, and, then, and then nine months after that, it'll be, born on, a, on another sort of date that's good is that something you get into not so much but I know a lot of families yeah. that do I mean they base it on astrology and what type of personality they want their baby to have or what type yeah. of life um, and how that dynamic can work with the mother and father's astrology as well so to that write be, that story. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So it's interesting isn't it there's just all these things we just it's just I mean it's just yeah we've just been taught to view birth as you just have a baby if it's just all this random kind of stuff right oh it's this oh it's that i mean even it's yeah well, like these gender reveals right it's all this yeah. it's sort of building on this thing of we don't know what it is oh it's just this big oh now we can find out that it's it's a boy or a girl and we can label it and we can blah 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 mm-hmm. um it's it's just coming from a place of yeah, like um, not knowing, right? It's definitely not intentional. It's and I, obviously you can't choose the sex of it. That was you know, but um, we just sort of go into birth as as I don't know. We just don't know anything about it, do we? And this is how most people have their first child. They're in their young twenties, and it's like, and I heard yep. someone say it's like a lot of women. You know, the first reaction is when they find out they're pregnant. It's oh crap, you know, because it's not planned. And so yeah, that's the first yeah. signal, right? Instead of like, oh, yes, finally. You know, <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, shit, now what do we do? Well, mate, our whole thing was planned and that's the whole, yeah, so it was awesome to go into this with that. And, mate, even when we we finally did decide to find out the gender, that's something, you know, obviously that's it's up to the, you know, the couple to decide. But we did. It was a real, like, should we, shouldn't we? And when we found out, we actually asked Carly, took a nice, beautiful card and pen in to the lady who was doing the scan and she asked her to write the gender on this card and then again we planned a night um, where we got together, a beautiful night and celebrated and then we opened the card together and we both just screamed with joy that it's a girl. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and just started bawling our eyes out, mate. So it's pretty it was pretty awesome, man. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah. like we've been we've been blessed, mate, with the, with the whole thing. But like, it's real, mate. It's a real thing. And look, like you said, with planning on the top, like when you're aligning with the stars and stuff like that, that's definitely something you know you can get more into. And you know, mm-hmm. how cool is it? Like people are like going through the medical world trying to create these babies that they want. All they got to do is their research. And look at the different star signs and, and plan when what type of you know baby you want. If you want to, yeah, yeah. if you if you you, know, you have a knowledge of the um, you know astrology and so forth, which we all should have, and you know, um, and we we're not taught obviously, and it, it's something that I'm honestly really working on. And being a big guy of you know Santos's work, it, it's important for me to really own that stuff. So. Oh, astro theology, yeah. Mm. You've been quite there, Jess. Have you got any, any questions, anything you want to say? <laughs> um, yeah, I do have some questions. Um, so I guess, so how many babies do y'all have together? <coughs> this is our first child together. Yep. But between us, we have six. So six babies. Has, <laughs> I've got two handful. <laughs> have y'all have y'all done have y'all done this before with your other partners? 
Yeah, so I've had two natural births. This is my second, but this is my first one at home. And the difference between having a baby at home to having babies in the hospital was such a, I felt so much more empowered and I healed a lot quicker. Uh, she's a lot more relaxed of a baby. She's really cruisy and beautiful. And oh. um, our connection happened straight away at home because the three of us were just at home by ourselves yeah. that night. By that night, we were wrapped up in bed together. It's awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, well, and I feel like when you have the baby at the hospital, the first thing they do is take the baby away from you. That's right. <laughs> and jab it with a needle. Mm. Have a needle. Mm -hmm. Have a have, yeah. welcome, to, welcome to the world. Have a bit the of world. Pain. Here's your have, yeah, have a bit of pain. Get mm. used to it. Yeah, and the old smack it on the bum to make it cry. <laughs> right. Welcome in, smack. It's <laughs> like, what the hell? So Billy, Billy. So is it? Oh, sorry. I'm sorry. Is so is that is that the term you use for it is a natural birth? Because I mean, but I, when I hear natural birth, I think of at home birth. Mm. Like my sister's had all of her. Uh, I think my sister has four children, and all but three, uh, or all but oh, one, were friend. born at home. And yeah, I know, uh, were born natural at home. And actually the first baby she had at the hospital, they forgot to take her epidural out. And so she, they didn't take it out for like four or five hours until after she had her baby. And it was just a terrible experience all the way around. But, um, so when, when you say natural birth, you mean that you plan it. Yeah, so there's a few different terms. So natural birth is a birth that's um, unmedicalized, you know, um, given birth vaginally without any assistance or very little assistance. You've got uh, free birthing, which is also birthing without any other midwives or care attendants at all. So just yourself and your partner or a friend. Uh, home births, so there's a few different terms that are being thrown around at the moment that it's a bit of a trend that's going on, but at the same time, I think it's a beautiful trend because every, uh, couples are starting to own their experience and tap more into their intuition and really get to learn what the birth process is and how it works and take, um, take control of their birth story mm -hmm. and become more autonomous in their health. And I mean, if we're going to have a baby, we need to know how it got there and how it grows and how to get it out right <laughs> yeah yeah so, so the, the main thing is um like drug free is that pretty much the, the main theme with um yeah natural Carl, birth oh sorry that's okay <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, mate. that's a bit <laughs> you. Talking over, like, <laughs> we're talking over my lovely lady <laughs> my supreme pizza of you i'm very close for a <laughs> <laughs> um, um, yeah, so drug free is a big one because a woman <laughs> has her own hormonal pharmacy. She has everything in her body that needs to happen for the baby to come naturally and for that process to happen like clockwork if she's undisturbed and if hormones aren't interrupted by medication and synthetic hormones and painkillers and all mm. of these things that it actually disrupts the flow and the harmony of the woman's body and how it just works itself mm. to, mm. Yeah, to open, mm. to connect just with it. Thinking baby. about like induced births and I mean, that's, I mean, that's got to be one of the worst things you could possibly do, isn't it? So yeah. unnatural, mate. And yeah. I've, I've witnessed, I've witnessed both and I've been there for, yeah, four births that have all been induced. Mm. And then watching Carly um, do it all naturally, wow, mate, it was like textbook. We, we say, like, you know, it, no matter when you have a baby or whatever, it's all hard work, you know. It's like, yeah, it's like going to the gym. It's, it's hard work, but it's rewarding. Yeah. So, you know, like ours was textbook. It couldn't have gone any smoother. Carly was amazing, but it all comes through her research and owning the experience and, mm -hmm. and all that. But, like, mate, it was textbook. She produced the hormones and everything just happened. Like, so when it kicked in, it was three hours. I think we within three hours, we pretty much had the bubba. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Damn. yeah. So that, that's a fairly quick birth as well, like, isn't it? Like, nice and... 
Yeah, yeah. man. Well, um, waters, my waters broke at 4.30 in the morning and we mm. just, it was like a date day for us. We yeah, it was pretty out, cool. We, Gaz worked on his guitars. I went for a walk. Um, we had yeah. a beautiful dinner together and it wasn't until the house was quiet and the other kids were occupied that my body just fell into active labour at about 9.30 at night. Yeah. Um, so that mammalian primal protective way of the woman's body just waiting for the right moment just all happened the hormones were there ready to go yeah really really smooth and beautiful do you mm. think staying active during because obviously if you go to hospital like you, you they make you lie down in bed don't they pretty much all day i mean they might say get up and go for a walk when you start feeling labor pains but do you think mm. like that that day during the day actually getting out and walking and being do you think that's a big part of it as well rather than yeah, yeah. 100% mate Carly was doing these leg squats up these <laughs> up these stairs mate I was watching her just she's going up and down like a crab <laughs> and she's going no these are good these are gonna make like, yeah. and yeah. then next thing we knew it was on so it was yeah. it worked she and, and for any ladies out there like we said Carly knows her stuff and yeah I mean wow so she's really um you got to be able to, you know, if you talk the talk, you got to be able to walk the walk. And Carly really, as you know, she does both. So um, yeah, for any woman, women out there who want some, you know, guidance or help or, um, yeah, get in touch. Yeah, definitely, definitely, we'll leave that below. Yeah, mate. Carly, how how long were your other, um, how long were you in labour your other times, your yeah. other pregnancies? Yeah, the first baby was longer. A um, little bit longer being first child, so probably about 12 hours of active labour, the first baby. So there's a difference there. But um, That was a hospital birth, the first one? L yeah, like a no, normal no. with drugs and everything? No, no drugs. I no started, drugs, okay. Yeah, started at home, home birthing, and I was transferred at the end of yeah. my labour to hospital, mm. but still, he still came naturally. Everything was still drug-free. Um, nice and easy and smooth as far as no complications at all. But what happened was I was caught in the old paradigm way of thinking and I had a little bit of fear there and I didn't trust my body. And that fear is what slowed down my labour process. Whereas this time I really researched and understood the power of the body and the flow of labour yeah. and how much my connection with my partner meant to keep me, make me feel safe. And I felt safe at home and I felt safe with my man and I felt safe with my care attendant. I had a beautiful midwife who came to my house and we formed this beautiful bond that created a really safe container for me to, to really let go. Yeah. And I felt much, much safer. My personal choice was to be at home. I felt safer yeah. here in my bedroom than I did going to a hospital. Yeah. Especially these days. Wow. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't get me to hospital, mate, unless my leg was about to fall off, you know? Mm. Oh, or, like, mm. yeah. They probably would have made me labour with a mask on. Uh, um, uh, they probably, uh, are they? They probably are. It's, yeah, and they're not uh, allowing yeah. um, partners in the partners room. Partners in there, yeah. They're not allowing more than one person. So you're allowed one person mm. to support you. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. I, I, I was watching a TV, I was watching a TV show uh, and there was a, a daughter that was born in the NICU and it was so fucking sad because the mom, you know, the daughter had been in the NICU for maybe like three or four days. So the mom had barely had any contact with her. And then when she did have to see her, she had to have this fucking mask over her face yeah. holding this baby. Uh, and like that, you just touched upon like the, the amount of facial. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Made, like they've made our little baby. Like I just walk in the room, and I hardly like a lot of the time I'm not talking. I'm just going like, <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? But yeah, all that facial stuff, you know, like they're missing out on it. It's 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 evil. Mm, you know? It you is. Know? And they're having well, problems you know, with kids that they're not they're not developing properly because they're not developing the faces and they're not seeing the proper movements. That's right. Yeah. And, and that's why we go in and we make stupid faces at babies so that they can 
recognize our faces in every different position, you know. So they like can we exaggerate phenomenal. those expressions, yeah. mate? It's not just you know, it's yeah, it's <laughs> this way. Yeah, so if them, yeah, they're missing all that. It's just crazy, bro. And these these idiot parents will happily put the mask on their kids and themselves. So it's their loss. You know, it's the poor, but the poor kids, I mean, they're the ones that suffer. Poor kids, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm, not so I'm a Sunday school. I'm a Sunday school teacher, and I teach the two and three year olds. Which at this at that age, it's not really teaching anything. It's just you know watching them until their parents get back. And uh, I mean, I live I live in the deep south, so we have hardly ever had like mass mandates or any shit like that. But when the, what was the worst variant or whatever, the Omicron. Delta, or the Omicron, Delta, whatever, whatever the last one was, they but, said that the teacher, that the, the Delta, that, that they were going to make the teachers wear masks. And I thought, well, it's fucking bullshit, but whatever. And so I wore a mask and this little girl, her name was Kaylee came in and she was just, you know, crying her lungs out and you know at that age like all they want to do is be held and you know but once you hold them and they make that connection with you like you're not letting them down like they are attached to you at the hip for the remainder of time and so I held her the entire time then after lunch or after church we went out to lunch and I saw her out to eat at lunch and I went up to her I said hi Kaylee uh, and she looked at me and she had no clue who I, who I was. Oh my and, it, it bro- and it broke my heart. Wow. Mm. Good example, hey? Yeah. That's just, it's shocking. Yeah. And, yeah and anyway, mate, we could very <laughs> no, no, right. Yeah, we'll probably get kicked <laughs> off. Keep <laughs> keep on, about that. Let's keep on track. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, um, all right. So, what? Like, with intentional birthing, that obviously starts um, making a decision, right? To have to have a child. Like, what, what, is there sort of what's the process? Is there like a process that you sort of take people through? Um, sure. So, if someone's wanting to. If there's a couple wanting to conceive. We start by um, making sure that they're both healthy and well, and really detoxing and preparing their bodies to be able to conceive a child. And we want your both men and women to be as optimal health as possible, right? To create the most healthy, strong little baby. Yeah. Um, and then we also work on any emotional um, learning or growth or spiritual growth or like um, that needs to happen so that you're bringing less complications, less baggage, less karma into this little one's life. Mm-hmm. And so it's a lot of prep that goes into being ready for a baby. It's not just you know mm. doing the deed and there you go and you've got you've got the the seeds planted. But there's just all this beautiful work to bring a conscious child into mm. this world that we live in now. Yeah, and really, mate, it goes far as, as deep for for me. Believe it or understanding that really, if you don't have an understanding of the realm. Electromag, the how it all works. Don't have kids. Yeah. Like, we don't need. We don't need any more idiots. You know. Yeah, it's. Well, I mean, this is it, right? Um, and that's how how the majority act because they think they're in a, a random, you know, just totally random place, and so that's how they're having kids, right? Just totally randomly, you know. That's it's got no connection to anything. Yeah, um, and, so and that. Sorry, and you know, just, just with this, you know, like. We all take on that. It only has to be a kiss from someone and you're taking on all of the baggage from all of their ex-partners, all of their ancestry, so much that's being um, given, you know, to you. Thanks very much for that gift of, you know. <laughs> like, yeah, so, yeah, when you're fighting somebody above, you above, you can imagine what you're taking on. It's- yeah, man, so it comes back to, like, that's I want a society where we got switched on people. That's the Tartarians, mate. They would have had yeah. a great understanding of everything. Yeah. You know? Yeah, well, and that, 
it's like the start of Idiocracy where they show um, and it's like, you know, as they got into the 90s and the 2000s, like all the um, people who were intelligent, they kept putting off having babies because oh, everything has to be right and we have to have a house and we have to have this and we have to. And so then, the, and then they'd turn around and be 45 and go, oh, damn, we can't have kids. But then mm. at the other time, all the idiots are out in the bars just rooting each other and just popping <laughs> left, right and centre, right? And so <laughs> we end up with this stupid population like, and, and <laughs> like, idiocracy. <laughs> And there's uh, that that's still around. You still hear people say, Oh, I want children, but but I'd never bring them into a world like this. And I'm mm. like, we need good people. We need yeah. if you're an idiot, please don't. You know, don't. Yes, yeah. good, good. Just go away. Yeah. But, yeah. but if you're awake and, and, and you, you know, we need we need yeah. good humans brought in now more than ever. Like we've got to we've got to, you know, shift the percentages a bit here, really, yeah. don't we? That's it, mate. And when I speak to, you know, when we speak to our daughter, she's already a geocentrist. You know, we're not there <laughs> talking to <laughs> She's her. three months old, is she? <laughs> yeah. Sorry about that. She's been flat earthed already. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's teaching them the truth um, and what resonates for us as parents from the start rather than saying, yeah. Um, here's a nappy to wee in and then we're going to um, take that away from you and now you have to learn to wee on the toilet. It's like you're teaching them one thing and then having to show them something completely different yeah. a year later. So we see that as, you know, uh, we want to teach her what we see as truth from yeah. the start and give and her reality. a strong foundation. So she's not like, well, you didn't want to lie to me a second ago. And yeah. you know, you've told me one thing here. Santa Claus, you know. Santa yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the two, three. Yeah. I was bloody yeah. devastated. How dare my parents? I found Optimus Prime <laughs> in my cupboard. Hmm. To the Transformer Optimus Prime, <laughs> mate, I couldn't believe it. I was devo. I wasn't the same. It still scars me to this day. And I have I have nightmares about Transform. No, I don't. But <laughs> 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 yeah, like, but it's it's that it's that lie. Why lie to kids? So let's, yeah. as I mentioned in our last vid, let's celebrate what Christmas is really about. You know, the claustrum coming down the spine. We get the. Santa Claus comes from the term classroom. Mm, yeah. well, let's teach the kids reality. Let's celebrate Christmas in a different way about life, not going, mm. here's $2,000 worth of crap under a you know, tree and mm. you know, Merry Christmas. And they go, oh, I never knew what Christmas was about, mate. All I knew was this fat dude apparently was coming down. The, we didn't have a chimney. I always was like, oh. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? I know about chimneys. <laughs> creepy. How does he get in here? Yeah, it's a bit creepy too. Yeah, it's a bit creepy. <laughs> it is. Yeah, well, it is, right? It is, especially gosh, when you see the origins of it all. But I mean, this mm -hmm. is the thing because because of all the all the crap, um, you know, you, people just they don't talk about the truth. But it's like they know that it's not the truth. Like you say, you know, Easter Bunny and all this stuff. It because feed our kids full of crap and then we send them to school and and then in the end they never learn who we are so so that's that's creating this this um population that are you know of course right raised by the tv and propaganda and that because they never get the kids don't even get their parents point of view anymore because the parents are at work and they're tired and they come home and they're like oh, oh i've been working i'm tired let me watch the tv and and you know, you don't get like those conversations of, between, you know, kids and parents of, oh, well, look, that's probably crap. This, you know, look at it this way. It's um, so that whole connection. I mean, I guess that starts from birth, right? If you don't have that proper connection at the at the start, it's it's hard to build on that. Um, and, and the whole Santa Claus thing as well, it's people might think, oh, that's not much, but it's still, there's something, it's still going to put something in there, isn't it? In the subconscious, it's this sort of, Oh, I don't know if I can trust mm -hmm. my parents. And then you hit teenage years and what happens? All teenagers rebel. Gee, I wonder yeah. what that is, right? Maybe they don't <laughs> trust their parents. Yeah, that's you right. <laughs> yeah. So part of conscious conception would be, you know, well, that's why I, I do really love what you guys are teaching because it's giving adults a sense of grounding and a base to work from and resiliency and the autonomy and you know strength of personality and these are the mm. kind of qualities you would want to have in a parent in the yeah. gatekeeper to your life it's it's just such a different i think it, like it's part of the whole movement right we just got to live different if you want to see a different world and we've got to live yeah. differently you know i just on, when i was walking just before i walked past like an olive tree in a pot and i just kind of was 
in a hurry and just kind of brush past it. And then I thought, I probably should have respected that tree a bit more, you know, just sort of running to its branches and I left all this sort of energy. And I thought, and that's really like how we have to think because yeah. everything does, everything, you know, um, affects everything else, right? Everything has an oh, equal yeah. and opposite reaction. So, yeah, you know, if we're walking by going, oh, hello tree, you know, you're awesome. And that's then the whole energy everywhere changes. Yeah. You know, it's so it's it's a big, yeah, it's a big mind change. I mean, I think this is what's happening, right? It's happening across the realm at the moment. Um I don't you just sitting there looking down at us. So you got anything to say? <laughs> just jump in if you want. Um well, so so Carly, say if I wanted to say if I wanted to um have a baby tomorrow. Oh. I obviously don't, but so mm-hmm. what's what what would that what would that look like? What would that process and say I'm like really, really unhealthy too. Mm-hmm. So how long is that going to take to, you know, detox and like to go through that whole and say and say my partner is like super unhealthy too. Mm-hmm. So I guess, I mean, everybody's different and it also depends on where the consciousness is at as well, mm-hmm. um, if how much stress there is in that person's life. So I would be looking at like changing your work if it's not in alignment with your truth and looking at your stress levels and minimizing stress so creating more space and then looking at obviously nutrition and getting cleaner in your diet and removing things like alcohol and or drugs or cigarettes or anything like that that could be hindering the body's ability to conceive and then there's even things like um like love making as well so intentional love making and choosing a time when your body feels strong and you're making love in in process of wanting to conceive with the intention of conception. Then, you know, choosing the times in your cycle, getting in touch with your menstrual cycle as well and where your partner's at with his, you know, his strength and his body and like the strength of, of his sperm, all of those things need to be <laughs> looked into and um, monitored probably at least six months, I would say. Six months to a year, I would suggest a couple if they really have some habits to look into and to change, then give the body a year, six months to a year. Mm-hmm. So talk about that. Is that like a, is that like a ritual um thing because my sister my older sister and her uh, and my brother-in-law had talked about doing this probably like before I even heard about it from Campbell probably like two years ago they had talked about doing it and at the time I mean my family was just like you're fucking crazy but they (laughs) think we're all crazy um but they but they they, they haven't done it because, and I was actually talking to her about it today. And so she's really excited to see, to see this interview, but um, yeah, they, they didn't do it because they already had four kids and they didn't need a fifth. Uh, so, and they're actually like working on making their own school right now. So they don't really have a lot of time for all of that, but um, yeah. So what are like some of the rituals that like go into it? Mm-hmm. So do you mean intentional lovemaking or like conception, intentional conception? Concept, yeah, conception. So things like um, sitting with your partner and deciding what, when you would like your baby, that soul to come in, calling that soul in so you can have a conversation with the little person that's waiting to come in. They say that it's a contract between the three of you. So Gaz and I could want a child at a certain time but then there's that soul as well that's waiting to be brought into this body um, that needs to also be you know accounted for so it's sitting together and calling that little person in and asking for what you want from that child and um, for it to be the right child for you for your Mm. for your journey things like that so you can start to have those conversations together and it's like manifestation so Mm. it's using the power we're so powerful mm. we even physically got what we wanted like, we asked for a blue-eyed brown-haired girl <laughs> <laughs> yeah right, right. and like carly's got the brownest eyes 
you know, that you've ever seen. And yeah, so we got like the the blue eyed mind mind came through. You know, in your eyes and her hair. Wow. Yeah, so we got the yeah, but I'm just sort of that manifestation, like Carly yeah. said, you know, and we're we're such powerful. I mean, that's yeah. something that that you you just don't think about, do you? Like like actually trying to connect with your future child while they're still in in spirit. I mean, that's that's. I mean, just a lot of this stuff is so obvious when you hear it. It's like, well, you know, but but you just yeah. never, you, we would yeah. never think of it unless. Yeah. Because we're so programmed to, to see it differently, to have that disconnect. But I mean, yeah. that's that's wow. Um, that's yeah, that, that's awesome. And um, you know, even just so when when that time comes where you're wanting to conceive, then it's taking the time and creating a sacred space, and you know, creating space for you guys to connect and to um, make love with the intention of creating a child. Mm really have that both in your mind's eye together and calling yeah. that child in so it's do you yeah. bring frequency into that at all like do you like with music and, and, and things like that absolutely mm. you could yeah four three two you could be chanting you could be breathing together to create a certain yeah. energy in the body to connect you guys deeper and so, we while carly was pregnant you know i was always playing four three two to the bub and we're, mm. we were, Carly was still doing, we were doing our sound therapy, um, like, nights as well where we, you know, we run, like, nights where people can come and Carly does yoga and I play the 432. Oh, yeah, nice. People into, yeah, and it, it really goes down to treat, man. But, yeah, Carly was doing that. I think our last one, she was about seven months pregnant. Yeah, yeah that's oh. right. <laughs> <laughs> like... So, yeah. but yeah, you can really, um, yeah. There's so much. Well, Carly can speak more about it, mate. But there's so much more that, that we're, we're. Yeah, really... yeah. I think we're going to have to do a part two on this because we're sort of just scratching the surface, really. Mm -hmm. um, it, do you, is there anything to do with talk? Like once, once you're pregnant, um, is, is there any sort of um, you know routine um, with talking to the the baby while it's in utero? Yeah, I think start talking to the baby straight away as soon as you know that you're pregnant. Mm -hmm. You know, they they feel everything and the sound of your voice. So, for example, Billy, our mm. little girl, she knew mm. Dad's voice the moment she came out of the womb. The midwife because, just looked at us like because yeah. as soon as I spoke, yeah, the but like the, she was like, yeah, the, 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 <laughs> like instantly she goes far out. Uh, you know, that's him. <laughs> that's who owns that voice. Yeah, well, and, and it's vibration again, isn't it? It's frequency. Uh, yeah, that's it, brother. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, you got to talk. Use these things we have, mate. The voice, you've got a voice for a reason, you know. Mm. Talk. I just, and even now, I just talk like we just have conversations, and they're just shapes a lot of times, you know. Like ah, ooh, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, it's all. Um, but again, it's all frequency. Mm, yeah, yeah. It's it's connecting, even if we don't know consciously what we're you know tra transmuting or whatever then it's, it's something's happening anyway it might end with a mask on your melon you're not going to do that <laughs> just, yeah. just, ah, bloody family yeah. with their kids with those things on their faces man if i see another one oh i'm gonna go out and talk to the bloody father i'll tell you what well you know in inverted brackets father right jesus anyway yeah. that's my rant <laughs> Sorry. it's all good man yeah it's, it's hard. So, so this is my, I don't know, this might be pers too personal or whatnot, but like, so do you all uh, like have sex just to have sex just because you feel like having sex? Well, we don't really. Or is it always the purpose? Keep going, Jess. I keep interrupting. <sighs> it's not so, there you go, Jess. Say it again. Yeah, so, like, do you all have sex just to, I mean, is there always a purpose or sometimes you just feel horny and you want to have sex? <laughs> well, both, but I think, um, you know, it doesn't have to be a certain way all the time, but I do think that we have been taught to have sex and that most of our education comes from pornography and movies and you know, talking in the school playground and um, it's not, that's not really 
love making. Mm. So there's intentional love making too, and that's what <laughs> we've been focusing. So what's that? Our relationship on. So we've been making love not to not with the focus purely of orgasm, but with the focus of connection together and coming together as one and becoming deeper on a consciousness and spiritual and emotional level together so that we feel closer mm. and stronger and more connected as a couple. Therefore, we're able to achieve more and, you know, we can use that energy that is created between two beings to create whatever we want. Mm, to use that energy, utilise yeah. the, you know, you're not, you know, dropping it on the, the mattress <laughs> or the sock or whatever. <laughs> no, sorry. but you know what I'm Yeah, yeah, sorry. So, so <laughs> like I touched upon before, bro, it's creating this, rather than cut this cord, so you make love, yeah, and then we can get to the point where you go, like, you, see, you just sort of know when you've had enough, If like, and sometimes we go, you know, or sometimes you just got to because the baby's crying, and but sometimes, and we'll just go, we'll cut it there, we'll come back tomorrow sometime, and we'll, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll find it there. So what that does, mate, those, that t- next, the whole period that you, you, you hang you're around, you're around the house, you know, she's bending over to doing the laundry. I'm like, <laughs> you know, so it creates this, you know, <laughs> yeah, it creates this, like, you're always, you're always like, baby, you know, give her a slap on the bum, like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But so it creates this wanting all the time. And, mate, like, yeah. Women, yeah, and the women love that. They feel wanted. It's not yeah. like you drop your bundle and then you're like, I'm sweet now. You know, yeah, and I'll have a sleep. We, and- yeah, so in, in a physical way, that can be seen as like finishing the connection. That's and, and like yeah. that, and we call it right. Oh, that, have you finished? Yeah, well, yeah. yeah. And so, um, so what you're saying is, when when you don't finish, um, that connection stays there. Basically, yeah. you're still connected on, on a higher <laughs> level than you than you would be. Yeah. yeah, and we're taught that you know it's not. You not haven't done it right unless you've orgasmed. Mm. And even for us, it takes a little bit getting used to. It. And then once you get it, hey, babe, it's like, oh, okay. So in ancient, you know? ancient wisdom, ancient philosophy, they see um, ejaculation as incontinence. Mm. So that, as what? That, that means pooing your pants. Just incontinence, like, like, like incontinence. Yeah. Okay yourself yes yeah. so in the undies because that's <laughs> the <end of> life. <laughs> what do you want to control charlie give him a slap jeez uh, <laughs> <laughs> we, you're supposed to ejaculate to create a baby not just all the yeah. time any time it's your life force for yeah. minutes their intelligence their strength their stamina their creativity all of these things no, and they're just releasing it all anytime, whenever, all yeah. the time. Some guys are jerking off three, four times a day. Mm. And by, no wonder by the time they, you know, these guys walking down the street, they look a little bit gaunt. It's interesting the words that we call people, isn't it? You know, when we don't like them, you know, he's a he's a wanker and you know, all this kind of stuff like yeah but, but i mean i mean because i'm fairly new to this topic too um but the first you know sort of thing i thought is i mean it it is it's it's creation right it is literally what sperm is right it, it's 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 literally creative energy and creative force so um i guess in that sense you know you can see how if you're you know, leaving it all over the place, and yeah, I mean, it's it's out of you, it's out of you, isn't it? Like you're, and they reckon once you start doing that, mate, you start dying. Like literally, when you start ejaculating, that's when you start dying. So is this? Uh, is there any research on, on aging? Is oh, like, this, we like, is this because obviously you know humans can only live to one hundred and twenty years now, right? That's it. Is uh, that Bubba? Oh, Bubba's crying. Oh, <laughs> <really. laughs> I uh, you need to go. Uh, no, I think we'll. I'll. I'll. I'll go and get. I'll just go and try to put the dummy in the baby, and you guys keep going. All right. Cool. All right. Got any more questions there, Jesse? So in front. Uh, oh, hang on. Oh, sorry. 
No, go ahead. You go, go ahead, Carly. Carly. I was just going to say, in France, they call orgasm min oui, which means little death. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah. So each time it's taking some of the man's life force. It takes, it's a, a, one ejaculation oh. is like equivalent to three litres of fluid from the body, leaving the body. Is that what it takes to create it? Wow, holy dooly. <laughs> wow, I don't just see that some of the words that we call these old shriveled up people, you know, because I mean, yeah, that's, yeah, that's you right. know. Um, yeah, wow, a little death. That's because when you think of it, you know, it's sort of fractally, I guess one way is what's well, creating nothing, and the other way is creating something that's going to create something that's, you know, it's a fractal thing, right? Because that, that gets expanded as, as you go forward down through the generations. So um, in that metaphysical energy sort of sense, you can see that that's, I guess, putting putting yourself forward, right? Putting your energy in, into the future kind of thing, where the other way is kind of, again, like it's disconnecting, right? It doesn't go anywhere. Exactly, so. yeah. So part of what I teach is a lot of couples, they can make, make love and not ejaculate or not orgasm and use that energy that they've, built together between the two souls to then go and create something so maybe go and play some music or go and write a song go and write your book or go for a run that creates energy that then can be used for something else you know if babies aren't in the picture mm. so is so that are you all, so are you oh, you, you go go ahead no no you go Jess <laughs> you go oh so are you only coming when you're wanting to make a baby or is? So we, we hugely limit it. So we're really conscious of how often and when and um, especially for the man. So if he's org orgasming all the time with ejaculation at the end, then he's losing so much energy. So if it's more about the body's constitution as well. So from an Ayurvedic or a um, physiological perspective, if a man is a little bit weak in certain areas of his constitution, then ejaculating five, six times a month is not going to suit his body type. So it's about building strength or ojas. Or, so in Indian medicine, they call it ojas, which is life force. It's keeping his life force strong by not ejaculating all the time. Is, so is this so related you think at that all? Oh. <laughs> Sorry. You, you go. You go. I was just going to say, is this related at all to the like, Kama Sutra practices? Yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. And <laughs> Jess is looking <laughs> a bit concerned there. So we're not talking about... Um, limiting like, <laughs> pleasure right like it's just that we've been taught that the only sexual pleasure is orgasm but it but so so you're not saying that yeah you're not having sexually more it's so much better so much better like we have been severely ripped off in our yeah. society <laughs> there you go right so it's better you you on like you you're there the whole time it's not just this all done you know it's this intense it's like dance. connection yes. and this and you breathe let's say breathing is very important you want to be breathing in and out at the same time or breathing each other's breath and in and out you know and that sort of stuff and and telling each other where you're at too you know like we yeah. sort of rate it We'll be like, I'm at seven, babe. She'll be, or sometimes the like, babe, you're at nearly a 10. Back it up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, oh. babe, you know, really getting me going today. But um, yeah, so breathing's really important, you know, and mm -hmm. and also reminding what you what you're doing there, looking at your partner and going, babe, I fucking love you. You're so beautiful. You know, that's what you're there for. You you're not. Mm. You know, yeah, like like we say, you can, yeah, you can have sex because you're horny and all that sort of stuff. But I don't know if I get, I don't even know if I get. It's a consciousness shift. Yeah. Once you start to practice more well, conscious lovemaking, you don't get those. Yeah, it's not like, yeah. Well, horny's 
physical, isn't it? I mean, which is what we've been sort of taught to, to um, you know, lust after, you know, like women, mm. shapely women and all this kind of stuff. It's all like, and, well, oh, look at that and short dresses. And mm. so I suppose when you're looking at it as a more, more on a energy level, then you're seeing different things, right? So you're not getting turned yeah. on by, you know, someone's ass or whatever. It's more like, which is probably good. I mean, if if, we, if people in pubs looked at people and sort of saw their aura and what kind of people they were, they'd probably be a lot more like, oh, maybe, maybe not, you know. Well, if you're in a, yeah, if you're in a pub, then yeah. Yeah, you're in the wrong spot. <laughs> Just have your beer and leave. <laughs> Talk to yeah. you. In a pub, turn around. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's, um, it's making love from the heart space rather than from the base chakra. Yeah, okay, yeah, oh, good point. Being primal and animalistic. Yeah. You can mix it up with intention. Yeah, you can mix it up too. Like, you don't have, yeah. sometimes you're like, babe, I've, sometimes, yeah, I'm just like, babe, I've got to let it go today. Mm. Yeah, and then it's exciting for a woman too. It's not like every time you just, you know, it's this, the water works. Mm. You know, control something is, again, women, like, they love it. You know, they know that a man, you know, he doesn't shit <laughs> the mess, you know, he, he can control himself and then he can walk away, come, you know, and come back and give it to her again tomorrow with intention, with all that built up energy and you can just keep building, Yeah. you know, and then you, so after lovemaking, you're carrying that energy and then, yeah, Carlos will go, now go up and make some guitars or now go and play, you know, that song, go and record that song you've been working on. Yeah. Use that, use that energy for creativity. Yeah. Yeah. Wow, it's a completely different way to look at it, isn't it, really? Yeah. Once you start practising, it changes the whole way of lovemaking. And is that how you how you learn this? Is I mean, is this pretty much an individual, well, not individual, like a couple thing? Um, you're sort of going with a certain intention and, and, and work it out? Or is, is there like a, a method to it or...? There's definitely methods, Campbell. I've, I've actually got some really great um, books and content that I can email you for people that are listening for reference to really good reading content. Yeah, um, cool. Yeah, if you want to do that, I'll put it in the links below, people. Yeah. yeah. On methods on how to learn these these types of practices. And then it's just having those beautiful conversations with your partner and getting mm. on the same page. I think it's something you both definitely want to bring into your relationship together. Mm. Yeah, and humour though too. We we laugh our heads off, mate. Yeah, <laughs> so like, we're always laughing, you know. And I we've got a few things that I do where no matter the situation, I'll just go up to her and I might say this thing, you know. And no matter what, she's just got to go fuck. That's what I've done. <laughs> <laughs> Can't believe you did it here, you know. But yeah, like if if humour's a big thing as well in in healthy love making you know yeah well it's it can yeah it's not you don't really see too much laughing <laughs> normally laughing is a bad thing if you're making if you're <laughs> having sex but but i mean yeah it's, it's all this again it's it's because it's all kind of physical isn't it it's all like am i doing you know am i doing a good job or you know or how, how close am i to you know whatever or how close is she and it's this physical thing really isn't it and kind of trying to prove yourself almost, I guess, you know. I mean, it's like, oh, he's or she, you know, who's good in bed and blah, 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 and it's looked as a good thing. But, yeah, I mean, it's got to be a bad thing, right, because if you're good in bed, that means there's lots of people <laughs> that are saying that, so that's probably not a good thing. I think if you've got that connection, you're good. In, you're going to be good in bed. Mm. If you don't yeah, have that it's connection, it's, you know, you, it's going to, you know, it's just... You might as well, you know, we were doing a porn movie or something. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Connection's got to be there, you know, and then it's always going to be good. Yeah. How can it not be? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, right, especially yeah. when you're on the same wavelength, man. You, you're both eating the healthy food. Your minds are on the same page. Like, you know, like at first when we started going out, I had Carly in tears about certain things, you know. Like we'd walk around a beautiful walk in the park, the dog, the dog and birds are chirping, and I say a few things and I'm just, <laughs> just like crying her eyes out. And I'm like, fuck, I haven't even begun. Like, <laughs> like 
<laughs> so yeah, truth like hurts. truth hurts, mate. You know the channel. Truth hurts. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah, so, all right. yeah, and that's what had, that's the way I had to. But like, that's the way I have to. But like, when I met Carly, it's like this is me. Mm, yeah, yeah, exactly. People are, I don't know what the hell people do about like meeting someone and pretending they're like this, and then the cracks start to appear. I know. So yeah. Those they'll start to appear. So straight up, I was pretty clear with Carly about you know. Uh, I think I've said before, mate, in our local area, a lot of people call me the bamboozler because I just bamboozle people. Well, it's not even. Some of the time, it's just so. It's just scratching the surface, but they're just so fucking dumb. Yeah, yeah. You know? And just someone who just says a few things that they've never heard before, that's insane. But, yeah, they're getting off topic a bit. But mm. No, I mean, it's, it's a good point, you know, like if you, if you can't connect and be truthful with someone on a, on a real level, then you've got no business being with them, have you? And this whole thing of, you know, dressing up and pretending you're this. And, I mean, you know, you look at all these, you know, what are they, Tinder and all these different sites, and it's always all these sexy pictures and I'm this and I'm that. And, and look, yeah, it's yeah. never like, you know, oh, I, I like Ricky it. Ricky and Ball, that's how we met. <laughs> I'd love to see Campbell's tin, Tinder profile. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. We did it. Oh, no. Oh, no. No, well, luckily, yeah, she, like, Jess found me on, on a video. Actually, um, uh, on a video I did with, oh, who was it, Dave? But um, yeah. So she knew that I was I was weird anyway. So that was good. Yeah. <laughs> good weird. Yeah, yeah. But this is the thing. Like, if you pretend that you're all, you know, if I was like, oh, you know, if I if we just met and I was like, oh, well, I think she wants to hear this, and I'm like, oh, well, this, this, yeah. this, and this, and then like three months down the track, I'm like, well, really, it's all a conspiracy. They're out to kill you. <laughs> it's like, well, there goes that relationship. So, I mean, tr- tr- yeah. you've got to start with truth or else it's a whole yeah. building on rotten foundations, isn't it? Exactly, mate. And it, it depends what you're looking for. You know, the, like when I was 18, mate, I'd tell girl, like, girls I was a skydiver. You know, <laughs> but girl, what do you do? I've I'd, I'd, I'd just, I'd just got back from skydiving. Because <laughs> <laughs> when they ask you to, oh, can you take me? Oh, I'm booked up. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, they just, the season just finished. Next year, maybe. <laughs> the wind's not right today. <laughs> but it's, well, it's, it's so that, true, right? Like, yeah. yeah. Without like, letting go of the ego, though, isn't it? Mm, like, that's all ego anyway. Exactly, mate. I was massive. I had the biggest ego of like, anyone like, when I was growing up. But that's Sydney. I was brought up in this but you have to. crazy culture, bro, looking back. Yeah, well, I mean, Australian culture was, you know, we think it's laid back, but it was pretty... You know, you, you had to be like mm. some, you had to be whatever, like a, a bogan or a surfy or a this or a that, didn't you? In Australia, pretty much, yeah. or else you were just like a, a what? <laughs> <laughs> a bogan, which is like uh, a redneck, I guess, like yeah. a redneck, um, or like. And you've got the clogan, which is a classy bogan. The, the what? What are they? Clogan. Clogan is clogan. <laughs> I should be writing this down. I should be writing this down. My heel, my heel desert boots, if they, is that what they wear? But, desert. Um, desert yeah, DBs, mate, DBs. Oh, you have a pair. Rollers. Remember rollers? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone had them. Like, it was just, <laughs> that was it, you know. You had your flanny and your jeans or you had your, your tank top and your, and your board shorts, you know. Flanny. Yeah. Flanny. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Surfies, skaties, or you're a wog. Yeah, 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 yeah. Or you were, yeah, yeah, exactly. So, no, it was, it was, and we're taught, you know, you've got to I'm fit having in, so right? much fun learning Australian. Oh, no, no I'm, te- <laughs> I'm teaching you how to speak properly. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, so cool that you guys, are, um, you know, found a connection. And yeah, she hunted me down. I'm happy for you both. It's really mm. cool. It is. It's just a pity that. You know, we're pretty much as far away from each other, uh, other as you can get on this known realm. So, so we've got to fix that. Right, isn't there? I mean, you're basing your relationship on proper connection. Oh, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I, feel the, I feel like that same way, yeah. And we're going to have, I mean, you know, we're going to know each other for, you know, sort of two, 
and at least two months talking before we actually get in the same physical space, right? So mm. I guess if we last that long, then we're, we're, we're doing all right. <laughs> then we should be good. But, I mean, it's a good point. I mean, I mean, what do you, do you I think that everyone's, you know, kids or well, people that have kids and get married, but we seem to do it too young. Definitely. Right? No, like, yeah. like, I know, you know, I had my first at 25, which isn't even that young in the spectrum of things, and I was way too young. Mm. Like, and, and apart from the fact that, I mean, I'm, I was definitely too immature. I hadn't been, you know, we just don't get taught anything. I'm still right? immature, mate, and I've got some bad <laughs> I work on being immature, actually, but. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I was 21. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was 21 when I had my first. And, mate, then I, I, yeah, three kids pretty young by the time I was 25, I think, and then two of them were deaf. So I've had dealing with that and cochlear implants and all sorts of stuff. But he's now 21. He's a legend. He's a good boy. He lives with us, Bradley. Um, And, yeah, Carly was, how old were you, babe? 28. 28, so a little bit older. But um, obviously you can see Carly's a lot younger than me. (laughs) <laughs> see you gotta learn you gotta let guys out there learn off me man <laughs> you know you gotta say the right things mate uh, yeah, yeah. You know? i didn't know i didn't know if campbell was like 15 or 50 <laughs> yeah he, and he's because he's got no hair he's got no hair. <laughs> <laughs> spoken about that. Uh, yeah i know like i'm just I'm jealous mate i've got like the opposite thing going on i just can't grow like this this is probably god this would be close to a week wow yeah you're lucky so, bugger <laughs> so no I've got <laughs> childlike hair growth this is like what 20 minutes yeah <laughs> yeah right <laughs> Homer Simpson, <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. Comes so back. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I just, I don't believe in AG. I mean, that's another thing, right? And and it could be to, do, you know, the whole sex thing, you know, I mean, that's a, it's a massive focus of our um, society, you know, and if that's aging people, um, maybe that's, but, but I don't even believe in age. I think age is a scam. Like, mm-hmm. I think the more that you, you tell yourself your age, then, then the, the, the faster you're going to age. Exactly. And they're celebrating birthdays every year, mate. Yeah. yeah. How old are you this year? How? And then yeah. you, know, you hit a certain age and it's, oh, you old bugger, you old bugger. I remember when you were young yeah. and it's like, what the what? Mate, yeah. you're still young. You're the old one. You can bloody bugger off, you know. And, mate, they tell you at school, the charts, you're sitting there doing the school work and it says, at, you know, 10, you're going to look like this. By 16, your balls drop. You're going to look like this, a little bit of facial hair. 21, like this. 32, like this, a little bit of a belly. 45. Yeah, you're there. fat. Yeah. <laughs> and then 70, you're fucked and you're dead. Yeah. So, yeah, they're teaching us in these indoctrination camps we call schools. Um, yeah. They're teaching us how to die quicker. Mm. Look at the word diet, mate. Anyone who's on a diet, they're going to die. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly right. The, the diet. You, just, you just want to be. It's like training, exercising, and all that shit. Mate, people do things that they can't keep up. And also, it's not necessarily good for you. Like you're all this working out in gyms. Do you know that um, comedian Carrot Top? Have you seen him? He's like this funny, oh, funny. Yeah, he's, got, he's got a real sort of funny face and this really curly orange hair. Is that guy wears a headband? Yeah, I think so. Like and does it? Yeah, and like he, he got really, really buff at one point. He was just like ridiculous. He'd, like he was this funny looking guy like he's with on red hair. He, he, he looked like he was on steroids. He did. Yeah. And I saw an interview and he said basically he he got this gig for like three or four years doing this comedy show. And it was in the middle of the day and he had nothing else to do. So he literally just lived in the gym because he was bored. And he said about three years into it, he looked at himself and went, what the hell? And then he realised that he couldn't, he was had all these aches and pains in his body and he was just not, because his body just wasn't built for it. Yeah. And so this is the thing we... Well, I can that, 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 that Stuff like that ages your joints, right? It ages everything internally your muscles your, your tendons yeah. all this kind of, and we see it all the time in athletes right professional athletes you know they're amazing until they're 40 and then you see them at 45 and they're hobbling around they can hardly move and they're like uh, uh, uh. yeah 
So it, it's true. Everything we're taught is is every to, to kill us, right? Like, yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. And, and, and I suppose it starts with birth. Sorry. Sorry, it starts with birth, right? You come out, smack you on the ass, chuck some needles into you, put you on your way. Yeah. That's Good right. luck. And these Aussie families, bro, just I just love it how we're like, like eighteen comes around. It's like fuck off. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I. I yeah. Like, it's, Fucking bank shot, a river dirty. Mate, I just don't get it. Why don't we set us like, mate? You know, I was just saying to Carl the other day, like our families, they, we're taught to they hold on to their money till they die. They don't help their kids while they could, and then they hand half of their money over to the government. The government, yeah. You know, and then the government, like, and then they get the kids get a little bit. Like, it's just insane how these, you know, Aussie families of this, they they, they raise, you know, they do things. It, it's so backwards, mate. And yeah. then you get the European families in Australia, like, you know, yeah, yeah, like, their kids. They look after them. Yeah. They get together. They got a. They've all got a house. Mm. <coughs> yeah. And all the family gets together, and they get them everything. And, they need. Aussie families, mate, we were just thrown to the wolves. Well, imagine, look what happened in the 90s when the, the prices, you know, housing prices went through the roof and all these, um, you know, Gen Xs and or, um, what are they called, the one above us, they all had these houses that were worth money. They all went out and bought, like, in, um, investment properties and half of them rented them to their kids. Mm. It's like they, don't, they didn't put it in to try and help their, you know, like, here's a house, you know. Yeah. I'll get the loan. You pay the, you know, you pay the mortgage or whatever. Or here's, you know, I can help you with this. Get in. It was how do I help myself? I, and now I've got, and and that all comes back to now I can go and tell people I've got an investment property. That's all that is. It's all bullshit because in the end, like, it's more. It, you know, you don't make much off an investment property, do you? It's so much hassle, and you've got to wait ten years for capital growth and all this other crap. Yeah, um, but, but it's it's a, it's not a good culture. It, yeah, in Italy, or you know, for an Italian family, you'll they will you they won't let you leave home until you're going to your own house. Oh, pretty much. It's so different, mate. And well, they make you pay like board, and it's like when you leave home, they can give you that board. Can you explain that? Is that yeah. like a what? When you're like eighteen, you you like it's, hit it's, the road. It's a cultural what? thing. That's the mentality just, in Australia. Yeah, it's just a men, Yeah, it's just a cultural thing. And half by the kids too, like you know, the kids sort of want to get away from you know, get out of the parents' house and that. But, but yeah, it's 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 like you know, you hit eighteen, you're off to college or you're off to a job, and we'll look after yourself. My job done. See you later. Good luck. <laughs> you know, yeah, it's a bizarre thing, eh? Hey? It like, is. And yeah. even now, mate, like our family, our like our like Billy has no grandparents, mate. You know, they, she's got grandparents, but they just want nothing to do with it. Yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. They've done their, they've had their hard yards, mate. You know, we've had kids, we've done all that. So, what? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, oh. I mean, yeah. 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 A, a lot of parents are like that too, you know, and, and a lot of, you know, my parents still work, you know, I and mean, go figure, right? Like they've been in high paying jobs their whole life, but they, they can't seem to retire. Um, but yeah, I mean that that's another thing, right? Oh, oh well, we're busy, you know. We 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 can't be grandparents, you know. We, we've got to work and we've got to do all this, and it's like, okay. And the the worst thing is, is these these people on their deathbed will go, oh fuck, um, can't get that time back, can I? Maybe I should, you know. It's such a scam, but and and it comes back to this whole job thing, right? Because people are spending their lives doing shit they don't want to do. Exactly. But then they get retirement, they get to a place where they don't have to work, and it's like. Well, fuck everyone. I'm sitting here watching telly. I, I earned this. I deserve this. You know, I, I I I did my slave job for 50 years, and that's right. That's but, what it is. And, and that, but they give up their power and say, "Well, I had no choice. So this is my reward." Mm-hmm. When really they chose that, and they should be sitting there going, "Fuck! I just wasted 50 years. I really need to get off my ass and do something." You know, it's uh, well, yeah. And by that stage, as we said before, mate, they're rooted. You know, you hit retirement. They've already been eating. They've made bad food choices for their whole life, you know. And then by the time they hit retirement age, they've got no interest. They've got no hobbies. What golf? golf. <laughs> yeah. You know all yeah. this rubbish, mate. No, they've got the, interest. Like a real, 
interest. It's, it's something cool. What do you do, mate? Like, what's what define you? I love saying, no, what's you? What what's you? Mm. What do you love doing? And most people fucking don't even know. No, and that's why you get all these retirees, and they got sheds and garages full of stuff, right? Yeah, yeah and they're fishing cool. rods and, and then they're biking stuff and then they're work and all these different hobbies because they're not actually interested in any of them. They're just turning yeah. up and going. Mate, oh. trust me, the guys, so the tool, the guys with the workshops with the tools on the wall and they've got like <laughs> everything yeah. drawn yeah. around them for the no sawdust anywhere. No, like I've got a I make guitars, as you know, as you know, and my workshop, it's yeah. I wouldn't say it's a mess, but I know where everything you is. You know where it is, yeah. That's and these yeah. these guys, mate, any sign of that any guy out there with the tools on the wall with the drawers if you have the time you know you're you not a every you know, tool yeah, yeah. You, you know tool. you can't make anything mate <laughs> <laughs> exactly. uh, I, so. I shared this video on facebook the other day and it's um what was this called it, it was uh it was an art exhibit that was supposed to be um it has hydraulic fluid running out of it and so when it was programmed it was programmed to be able to like get all the hydraulic fluid that it can as possible but then in the meantime do like a happy dance with the crowd well towards the end of its life it got to where it never had time to do any more happy dances all it had time to do was just scrape up this hydraulic fluid and the sad part and it's weird and i mean it's kind of Re resembles life i guess because the hydraulic fluid looks a lot like blood and um and, and the sad thing was that the whole thing moved off of electricity so it never even needed the hydraulic fluid so it was programmed into a life that it was like you know wasting away when it didn't even need to be like that <laughs> And I was like, I can't believe I'm fucking crying at this like <laughs> art exhibit. <laughs> this robot. It's a good analogy though, isn't it? Like, it is perfect, yeah. like, like the energy yeah. that runs us is actually ether energy, right? It's, it's literally man energy. It's man-made. Yeah, yeah. It's like it's not the physical that, that kills us. It's the mental. So like that, that statement. I don't know who said it, but but um, someone said everyone who dies kills themselves, you know, or nobody dies, everyone kills themselves, which I think is true, you know. It's all our thoughts and everything. We, we turn ourselves into whatever. And But it's interesting because, I mean, I think it's all, like, I've been noticing, like, people don't seem to be ageing as much anymore. Been, like, there's a lot of people that are 50, 60, 70, and you look at them and like, are you really that old? You look like you're a lot younger. Are you talking about me? Yeah, of course, mate. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's just shave the greys uh, off and you'll shave 20 years off, mate. Flush, yeah. flush your baby bill. Bill That's it, mate. Right. Back to baby. I'm just, I've actually just grown it out a little bit just to make all the other guys. When you, when you little shaved bit. your, um, your Santa <laughs> Claus beard off. Yeah, that was like oh, 10, that was years, mate. 10 years yeah. in one shave. <laughs> that was, yeah, that was a good beard, that. It was good. I had yeah. beard envy. Yeah, mate, it was just when you wake, you wake up in the middle of the night, you've got like beard in your mouth. Oh, oh. I <laughs> no idea what that would be like, mate. <laughs> uh, yeah, hair in your mouth, maybe, but no. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so have you got any, any questions left you want to ask? Hey, Jess, anything? <laughs> no no <laughs> no it was not it was nice to meet you i'm sure oh i'm sure i'll have a tons of questions but it's just gonna give me if i need a few hours to marinate yeah i know yeah it's a lot it's a lot of information it's good information too so um yeah i think maybe you know we might have to revisit this in, in a couple of weeks maybe if you guys are up for it, we can we can yeah. have a, a chat and then have a bit more um a few more questions and people you know, I'm watching, leave us questions uh, in the comments if you've got anything that, that we want to um, broach. And, of course, we'll leave um, all the links to uh, Carly's sites below if you want to check them out and contact her. So, yeah, thanks for your time, guys. Thanks for, for joining us. It's been, um, it was really enjoyable. Awesome. Yeah. Thanks, Campbell. Yeah, thanks for having us, mate. Thanks, Jess. And thanks, Jess, for, for joining us on your first ever um podcast recording video thing <laughs> she was a bit nervous yeah. but i think she did pretty well <laughs> you did really well nice to meet you jess 
Thank you. It was nice to meet y'all too. I'll talk to y'all soon, I hope. Yeah, let's tee up another one. Definitely, definitely. Yeah. Right. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, I'll let you go now because I've seen you getting up to your, to your little bub again. Um, Billy, is it? Billy, is that right? Yeah. Billy. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. Billy. Yeah. I love that. I love that name. Love it. Thank you. Thanks. Awesome. Love it. All right. Cheers, guys. It's nice to meet y'all. Pleasure. Have an awesome day and we'll talk soon. Awesome. Cheers. Bye. Bye. See ya. See ya.